Hello everyone, it is I, Dark Symphony 777, and welcome to another fan fiction review. As always, a link to start will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, leave a comment in the comment section below. And finally, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone in the world, so please respect that, as well as make sure to read the story before watching the video. So, uh, I'm I'm actually I'm trying to like mentally prepare myself for wanting to talk about this story because it's this story is uh this story is something else. The story is called The Bitter End. Um Who wrote this one? Because because the the link I have to find it is actually written by someone who actually picked it up. I think it actually let me say. Uh, Jim Bader. Yeah, Jim Jim Bader is the person who wrote this. Although I found it on a channel called The Altered Destinies, so... So there's that. But... The Bitter End, I think, is probably his... Might be the most remembered work by this author. For the content. It was... The content that it was about. This is a Ranma one half story. For those of you who don't know what Ranma one half is, it was a manga slash anime written all the way back in the 1990s, I think 1980s, 1990s. And the anime became well known for popularizing two specific concepts. It popularized the harm genre, like whenever you think of like harm genres like Love Hina, Monster Musume. It goes all the way back to Rama. And the other big thing is... Uh, Rama started the really weird trend of abusing guys equals comedy. Like, it wasn't the first... Rama wasn't the first to do that. It's, it, it was far from the first. But Rama was the, the manga slash anime that made it popular. That made it... That kind of... That kind of popularized the, the idea And the bitter end is sort of a what if scenario, where what happens if it took that specific concept, the abuse of Ranma Tadano, and they took out all the anime aspect because a lot of the reasons why the like this specific trope at least kind of works in a world of anime because it's in the world of anime. So you have cartoon physics, you have comedy, like for instance, with One Piece, Nami, you know, despite Luffy being made of rubber, Ra uh, Nami actually manages to beat him up, but it's always revealed that Luffy doesn't really feel the pain. He just does it, he just lets her hit him because it, it help, because he's helping a friend out. And, you know, it's Luffy stuff. But... When it comes to this story in particular, it shines a very disturbing light on this topic of men getting abused. And that's and none of it is playful last. None of it's there's no anime logic behind this. Again, the bulk of the story is just this idea, but without all the anime, all the anime stuff, and all that. So, when it comes to the plot, so the plot actually starts not with the relationship, but actually in an asylum. The story starts with a broken Akane Tendo. Uh, and and she's being visited by Ryoga. For those of you who don't know, let me let me, let me actually let me sidetrack to at least tell you what Ranma is about. So Ranma was an anime whose main plot is there's a boy named Ranma Satome, and him 
and his father were cursed where if they get splashed with hot water, they transform. With Ranma's father, when he gets hit by hot water, he turns into a panda. However, with Ranma, when Ranma gets hit by hot water, he turns into a girl. And, and the change is reversed when they get hit by cold water. And they get they move into a small town, uh, and where Ranma was kind of forced into a arranged marriage with the ten, with the Tendos. It was a it was a family of three girls, with their father saying, "You got to marry one, pick one." And he really doesn't like that. And all the people that Ranma kind of was forced to hang out with when growing up, going with his father, kind of shows up, starts harassing him. Wanting to get all the girls wanted to get married, all the guys wanted to, like keep him from the girls and, and all that and all those shenanigans. So it, it was a really cluster messy story, uh, I, but it, it flowed in a way that made it sense. It's just one of those. It's honestly one of those mangas that you have to actually read to make heads or tails of it because I can't really describe it anywhere besides guy gets wet, turns in chick, guy, girl gets wet, turns into guy. <laughs> but. Okay, and, but that's it. Let me go back to the the plot, and I have to actually, and I actually have to go into a little bit of detail because I have to highlight what's going on here. So the story again, the asylum. Uh, Ryoga shows up. Ryoga in in Ranma was actually a rival of Ranma, who basically. He got cursed. When he gets hit by hot water, he turned into a pig. Cold water, turned back. And he visits Akane. Akane doesn't know who Ryoga is. She's acting very odd. And they just have a simple conversation, and then he leaves. And then after that, we get a flashback. The entire story is told in is, is essentially one gigantic flashback. It go. The story actually starts uh, an unknown time in the past, where Ranma marries Akane, and it was a big thing for him, his family, and Akane's family. They're finally happy, and and everything's right at, at first. Uh, however, over the course of the story, uh, Akane starts abusing Ranma, and and Rama doesn't know what's going on because Akane is just blowing up at him. He goes to his family. The families are the family. His family starts blaming him because. You know, shame on you for making her angry, for blaming everything. And his friend Nabiki is... No, not Nabiki. Uh, 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 Yukio. Uh, kind of sees... The only one that kind of sees what's going on. And over the course of the story, where... Where uh, Ranma is getting more and more abused by Akane. And it gets slowly worse and worse. And it's, it starts to feel very, extremely uncomfortable. Because of, because of how realistic it is. Like, like Akane attacks... Ranma, Ranma, you know, is trying to do all these typical uh, abuse victim things. You know, he's trying to say sorry. He's trying to basically become a yes man and a doormat for her, but it's not working. He because he they slowly starts mentally breaking, and this actually culminates halfway through with Ukio taking him to a female support. Uh, abuse center, basically to take a class of women getting abused by their by men, and you know, seeing that maybe he could maybe he could get help there. None of the staff actually trust him. They actually 
completely dismiss him and bland and just say no because he's a man men don't get abused which led to Ukio splashing the hot water splashing uh, hot water on Ranma turning turning him into a chick and kind of showcasing the fact that yeah he, he he is the one who can actually you can actually share your pain you can actually experience what it's like being a girl because again Ranma turns into a chick and he, he starts helping the class out with learning kung fu and how to defend themselves. Not not so much attacking them, but just your defense. But also, he's slowly recovering. Akane finds out about it. Mentally breaks him to the point where he actually decides to stay a, chat, a, a woman instead of like turning back into a man. And, and Akane's anger issues just completely go out of control. And the story, the story ends in the story ends with Ranma pa and Ukio passing away by Akane's hand because her anger got the better of her, and she got and couldn't control anymore, and she killed him. And her whole family, and both of their families, the Akane's and the Satomes, I mean the uh, the Tendos and the, the Satomes, completely realizing that they had a role to play in it. And the story ending with the reveal that Akane, so in grief over what she did, mentally broke, leading to what happened at the beginning of the story. I wanted. I wanted to go I didn't want to go into too much detail but I wanted the only reason I went into this much detail because I wanted to I wanted to showcase the un, the incredibly realistic tale of abuse because despite the fact this is a story this presents a very troubling thought and that's something that still exists today and I always and I always found it completely disturbing because a lot of people it, for for context a bitter end was actually written in the 90s like like Ranma can claim to have Probably the earliest fan fiction online, and this was like from '95. Like this, is like the very beginning of the internet, and that, and this, this mentality even exists to today. The the complete asinine and complete idea that men can't be abused. And I always, I, I always never understood that because, because I always, uh, always cared about the ideas. Like you see people from all walks of life, from going anywhere, doing anything, just having the idea that men can't be abused is completely disgusting. Because you know I. And it's it's just disgusting. I just I I, I was I was a victim of abuse myself. So that's why I wanted to talk about the story because I didn't I wanted to showcase that something like this this specific story can teach someone that 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 abuse no matter who it's from no matter who it's doing it to abuse is bad abuse is vile 
and a wicked thing and that no matter and even the strongest people will completely break I won't say who abused me because I I want to be better than them but you know who you are I wouldn't be surprised if one of them who abused me watches this right now wouldn't be surprised you know who you are This story is a chilling, a chilling example of the stuff that, of the idea that this, that, oh, laughing at men getting attacked and bullying in anime is funny. Like, if it, if they deserve it, it's fine. If it played for comedy, it's fine. But you can see this in a, in anime across like the like 90s and 2000s even nowadays a lot of time it's just guys do something girls get overreactive and attack the guy and sometimes again sometimes you know it could be play for comedy and stuff like that but sometimes it's very very it, it, it enters the realm of over the topness like it's just so over the top that you, it's kind of cringy and even scarier and this is something, this is actually a big element of Ranma. And the fact Ranma says something or Ranma does something that's inconsequential, Akane gets angry and viciously attacks Ranma. You know, that's an actual thing that happens. And it, it plays into the fact that the, that the author's destiny when putting the genre for this story made it a horror story. Because the horror doesn't come from any any like sense of like gore or someone being hunted or you know some kind of overly supernatural or scary elements the horror comes from the incredibly realistic sense of you know anyone who's dealt with abuse who reads the story will know exactly how it's going to end. It's going to end in the worst possible way, with someone dying. But anyone who knows about abuse, who's known someone who's gotten abuse reading this, the horror is found in just the un... Over, like, the incredibly realistic aspects of abuse. Because it goes through everything. It goes, like... it. You slowly see... Ranma completely breaking breaking apart and none of it's play for last it's all it's all framed in an a in an overly simultaneously beautifully written but graphically broken way and I think that's the best way I can describe this story it's beautifully written but the content of the story itself is just it 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 could break it could break someone especially if they had to deal with stuff that I had to deal with like with Ra like in or even Ranma in the story had to deal with it's dark it's gritty it's it it teaches a very deep lesson in the fact that men can be abused and you shouldn't laugh at men getting abused. You shouldn't laugh at men who's suffering. Like, look at Johnny Depp. Like, he, he was abused. It's all over the internet. Like, but now, but Depp had money. Depp had power. Depp had a very good lawyer. He was able to prove and scratch and claw his way out of proving that he was a victim of abuse. Not every person, not every man is gonna have is gonna have those resources. They're not gonna have those assets. And I do. I do pre I do think this story 
can be used as a extremely valuable teaching tool to showcase a very realistic scenario of a man getting abused and the situ and the stigma that comes with it. And I think that's at the end of the day, that's why I think this story's greatest strength is it teaches you a startlingly realistic thing that could happen to anyone. And why that's not a that's not a good thing in any sense of si any situation. The characters they are written well, really well. I don't want to get into details because I think I think the the, the, the most important thing about the story is is the lesson being told. The, story, the the overall sense of dread and just the framing of everything of seeing Ranma slowly lose himself and everyone and his family not helping him because he's a man he has to, he must have done something to upset him, uh, Kane or Akane's family who's too blinded by the, the relationship finally getting an arranged marriage to really care or Ukyo who's trying her damn hardest to protect Rama and save him and, and, and try and fix everything but Akane constantly overly barreling, overbearing uh, her presence on, on Ranma undoing a lot of damage. It's it's all presented in a startlingly straight way, which kind of blends into like a common debate that surrounded this story, the idea of a uh, a character being having their character change to fit the story or having a character be canon because that, that's I might do a video on that in a future time because uh, because I'm, in, a, in a broader sense a lot of people did not like the idea of Akane having a lot of debates depend on the fact that oh, this is Grimdar uh, Ranma was a comedy or or Akane was out of character for this story because she wouldn't act like that in canon uh, you know, there's there's a greater debate to be had with that, with that idea. Pacing, it's very slow pace. It's supposed to set the pace plays into the tone of going very dark, uh, but not dark. Uh, having the broken Akane and then having it slowly dip and crest as we're seeing Ranma's relationships start to devolve into this a big abusive uh just incredibly dark and then he gets help and he's and it slowly rises and then akane shows up destroys everything and it crashes and then he try and then he gets a little more help from ryoga and then you think maybe and then you get that end, near the end where ukyo is going to just basically get rama away from akane and you sl slowly start starts to rise you see these hopeful these hopeful wordings of maybe this time maybe helping and then Akane kills them both Cra crashing the pacing in such a dark tone in pacing and, it, and the pacing is beautifully done to convey this it starts out slow but then as as Ranma uh, as Ranma gets help and starts to help the help the, the the class indeed it starts to pick up the pacing and then when Akane shows up she crashes the pacing down and slows it down as as a symbolic way of she's trying to control everything she's trying she's exerting her anger and her frustration and her mental and her rage issues onto everything even the pacing to in a weird sort of meta sense it and it plays beautifully in terms of grammar, the only grammar error I could see is the fact that the author misspelled every single instance of Ukyo. It doesn't have the U, but that's it. I, it could, for all I know, that could be an actual miss, not not so much an actual grammar error, but more a translation thing. It, it like I heard some names be spelled different ways. It could be that, so I'm not gonna. It's not really that big a deal. Bitter end. 
is a startling story that I think should be read by more people. It's, and I think this story should be shown to people who, who thinks men could not be abused. Like, how, just print out this, show them this, and, and show how scarily realistic. Because that's the, that's the story's biggest strength. Just how realistic it, it tells a tale of abuse. To happening to a man because it, it goes through all the stuff that that happens to a woman it's just it's a man who's getting abused and that's and that makes the story that much scarier would i recommend this story i would it's it it's near better off alone in terms of quality especially with the lesson it's trying to teach you with the real with the incredibly violent and scary lesson it's trying to teach you and the lesson is one lesson I think is probably going to be relevant for a long time to come if there's anything I would change I would simply change the character tag on specifically on the fan fiction because you can also find this specific story on Wayback Machine uh, probably just if Alter Destiny is probably going to be the one getting the link to it just change Nabiki, the Nabiki character tag to Ukiyo or Akane. Or add both, since fanfiction can do four character tags now. But that's it. I wouldn't change anything about the story. It's It teaches a very poignant lesson that I think everyone needs to look at. And coming from someone to experience this, it it means much more to have a story like this exist rather than people trash it for ruining Akane's character or or the fact that it's a man or because it's it's a story that takes place in a that's based off a comedy manga. It need this is a story that needs to be read read more. It needs to be shown to more people. I think, especially nowadays. This has been Dark Symphony 777. Thank you for listening to the review. And I will see you next time.